Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kigon. Now the news in detail. Jagdeep Tangar, National Democratic Alliance nominee and former West Bengal governor who was pitted against joint opposition candidate Margaret Alva, became the 16th vice president of India on Saturday by overwhelming majority. Around 93% polling was recorded in the vice presidential election on Saturday with more than 50 MPs not exercising their franchise. Tanga achieved 528 votes while Margaret Alva received 182 votes. 15 votes remained invalid. Tangar, who is a lawyer by profession, joined politics in 1989. He became the governor of West Bengal in July 2019 and has made headlines since then over his tumultuous relations with the Mamta Banerjee government. He tendered his resignation as a governor of West Bengal. The vice president of India, which is the, the second highest constitutional post in the country, is elected through an elect electoral college consisting of members of the Rajya Sapa and the Lok Sapa. Party Janda Party Manipur Pradesh said the party will organize one of the biggest marathons on August 12th as a part of Harkar Diranga Utsav. The BJP Manipur is aiming for a tricolor Indian flag in every home of Manipur. Talking to Hornbill TV, BJP Manipur General Secretary Premananda Singh said there will be cash prize of 1 lakh for both men and women category champion. It is being organized as a part of 75 years of independence. Premananda said they are expecting more than 2,000 participants. मिनी मैराथन के बारे में थोड़ा ब्रीफ बताइए तो मैराथन रहेंगे सब बिगेस्ट मैराथन हम लोग करेंगे इसमें 2000 से ज्यादा एथलीट रहेंगे अभी तक आया हुआ है 1200 से अंदर के एथलीट का नाम है अनाउंस किया जैसे जगह है हमने जो बेसवस का है 2000 के अब हम उसमें इसमें फर्स्ट प्राइस हम रखेंगे इसे 1 लाख रखेंगे दो कैटेगरी में रहेंगे इसमें तो मैन एंड फीमेल अलग से मेंस को भी वहाँ अलग से हमारा फीमेल्स को भी पास रहेगा वहाँ जो सेकेंड में आएगा तो वो लोग पास पास आते हैं आप कौन कौन आए तो हम उसको बीस हजार बीस हजार कंसोलेशन प्राइस है तो फोर्टी तो फिफ्टी के लिए हम रखेंगे तो फिफ्टी तो ट्वेंटी फाइव The Dabi Area Students Union of Mon District has asked the government authorities and contractors what it called fast maintenance within a week of the Namdola Dumont Road NH702, especially between Tui Mei Village and Mon Village Junction. The union warned that failing to do so may invite more aggression from the union. 
The union issued a press release on Saturday expressing anguish at seeing what it called the deplorable and pathetic road condition of the Namdola Dumon NH702 road. The union questioned the authorities for neglecting the road, which is said to be a lifeline for the entire Mon district. The NH702 has been inexisting since the time of the British, and yet its condition has not improved over the years. The union stated that contractors and workers have been deployed for over a year, but the condition of the road has gone from bad to worse to an extent that vehicles that ply on this road have to rush to garages after it for repairing. The road's condition endangers the lives of commuters there besides putting residents to suffer dust in winter and muddy water during monsoon, the union stated. Three health facilities in Nagaland have received the National Quality Assurance Standards Certification at the program today held at the Capital Convention Center in Kohima. Addressing at the program, Minister of Health and Family Welfare, as Pang Yu Pom said, Naglan has completed four years of implementation of Ayushman Parat Health and Health Wellness Centers in Naglan, thereby bringing quality care closer to homes of community with the provision of expanded ranges of services. While he congratulated the three health facilities of Naglan for getting the national certification under NQAS, he said their achievement should be an encouragement for other health facilities to participate in the program. Yes, it's two strong pillars. Ausman Bharat aims to bring standard shift in the country by increasing health systems responsive to, to the increased demand of health seekers and prevention and treatment of diseases. They still have completed four years of implementation of the prestigious Ayosman Bharat Health and Wellness Center in Nagale. And they a great success and bright moment for the department and the state as a whole. We congratulate and hail high your hard work with thankfulness. E-learning, e-learn, Naka telehealth, telemedicine platform which is now shifted to e sanjivani and an assisted teleconsultation system to elevate the urban rural divide in terms of health care services. It works on half and spoke model. The Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers and its spokes, which are made with the Heart comprising MPDs, specialty doctors at heart level. Dr. Ashogi Roy of the Regional Resources Center Naughty said Naglen is the first state to achieve the target given by Urban PHC. Roy said that out of seven PHCs in Nagaland, three PHC have been certified for achieving the target of 25%. He requested certified facilities to continue doing the good work. By government of India, so far certification of urban PACs are concerned. How many urban PACs are in Nagaland? Seven. Already certified? Three. 
because uh, the PSC in Mokokchong is it an EPSC? So it is three. So three out of seven is more than 30 percent, I will say. So the target is 25 percent, ma'am. So we have achieved it. And I must congratulate the medical officer, not only the medical officer, also to the staff of those four facilities, including Chicago also. And side by side, I take this opportunity. Asangla MD, Secretary for the Department of Health and Family Welfare, said the main objective of the program is to improvise to achieve targets to enhance health facilities. She urged health officials and staff to keep tracking their units every now. In our workplace. For me, I understand that way. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but this MQA is, is to assist our work. No? Therefore, I think each and every one of us have a cushion in there. While complementing the commendable job by the four centers, we also need to reflect whether we are satisfied that we could achieve for only four centers till today. When the program was launched nine years back and we are still on it, where do our district headquarters hospitals? The community health centers, the other health unit stands, where are we today? You know, unlike I've worked in many departments, this department has a unique feature. For every step we take, for every implementation, we get assistance from the ministry. Other departments are not like this, okay? We have three programs, four programs. But out here, we have nearly 30 programs, right? For every state. Of course, our government of India, the number of programs governing throughout the country is based on the assessment taken from all the states, irrespective of the bigger states, the mainland states, or the remote states like ours. But the objective is the same for all the programs. We need to know what is the program all about. The main objective of the program, each program. And then, since the target is same, improvise as per the need of our area. Within the state also, each district, each block has its own special needs. The All Sumi Students' Union convened its union assembly on August 3, during which the organization took a number of resolutions. A press release from the SKK received here on Saturday stated that the organization endorsed the powers exercised by the SKKS speaker in dissolving the organization's executive council. The organization resolved to set up an advisory board and nominated a number of members for it, the SKK stated. To carry out the program and policies of the SKK, a working committee has been formed too, the organization stated. Further, the press release stated that the union's speaker has stated that no individual or organization should interfere and outstrip the SKK's constitution or illegitimately claim to represent the office of the All Sumi Students' Union. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, the State Commission for Protection of Child Rights and the District Administration of Nogluck organized a program focusing on combating child trafficking. Nogluck's Deputy Commissioner Haizu Meru said Nogluck District needs to have a proper mechanism for the execution and the delivery of law. He said to have given a proposal to the state government and the Ministry of Women and Child Development for a one-stop center Mahila Shakti Kendra and Beti Pachao Beti Parao for Nogluck District. 
we have sent proposal to the state government we, and the state government, the Department of Social Welfare has also submitted the proposal to the Ministry of Women and Child Development for taking up one-stop center, Mahila Shakti Kendra and Peti Bachao, Peti Badao for Nokla district. I would like to request you, when you go back to Delhi, since you have your contacts in the Ministry of Women, Welfare and Child Development, please have a look on these proposals for Nokla district. Likewise, additional police superintendent of Nokla, Chai Chang Sang, highlighted various aspects of the law dealing with human trafficking besides child labor. He stressed on the prevention of child trafficking and mentioned operative measures for prevention, rescue, protection, rehabilitation, reintegration and prosecution of offenders. Section 370 uh, defines the trafficking of a person. Trafficking of a person is whoever for the purpose of exploitation recruits, <coughs> transports, harbors, transfers or receives a person or persons by firstly using threats, secondly using force or any other form of coercion, or thirdly by abduction, or fourthly by practicing fraud or deception, fifthly by abuse of power, sixthly by inducement, giving, including the giving or receiving of payments or benefits in order to achieve the consent of such any person having control over the person recruited, transported, harbored, transferred or received, commits the offence of trafficking. Also, speaking at the program, a representative from the SM Raffles remarked that every child is not born poor, but every child is born into poverty. The official urged women and students organizations and NGOs and government departments to work as a team to help children. But I have seen a lot of cases as a medical officer during my before joining even as harm rifle also. Ki most of the ex, uh, the child got traffic and the child got uh, you know uh, abuse for maximum for one which I have come across is for ex sexual exploitation. Like our full cooperation even it is not only the uh, NCPCR or the, the police department are responsible. We all are responsible. To, uh, to, to, to come across, uh, to motivate each other and inform that this child has been trafficked or this, you know, as we all the NGOs, we know ki, who are, where, I mean, it is of course the poverty. The Manipur Assembly has unanimously adopted two private member resolutions to set up a state population commission and implement the National Register of Citizens. The resolutions were moved by JDU legislator K.H. Joy Gishnan on Friday, the last day of the budget session of the State Assembly. He claimed that the hill areas of the state saw a population growth of 153.3% between 1971 and 2001 and it mounted to 250.9% during the 2001 to 2011 period. The valley areas also recorded a population growth of 94.8% from 1971 to 2001 and around 125% from 2001 to 2011, Joy Kishan stated. The JDU MLA raised his concern over the alleged infiltration of outsiders into Manipur. He claimed that there are restrictions on people from the valley districts for settling in the hills and a whopping population growth, particularly in the hills, could be attributed to the alleged influx of people from outside. In order to give an impetus to Operation Yatri Suraksha, a month-long pan-India drive was launched against criminals targeting passengers in July 2022 by Railway Protection Force. During the drive, 365 suspects were nabbed by RPF personnel and were handed over to the concerned GRPs for legal action based on which 322 cases of passenger crime, that is theft of passenger belongings, drugging, robbery, chain snatching, etc. were detected. Stolen property of passengers worth more than rupees 1 crore was recovered either from the possession of these criminals or in course of the investigation of these offences.
Delhi Lieutenant Governor Vinay Kumar Saxena on Saturday suspended 11 Delhi officials including ex-excise commissioner Araf Gobi Krishna citing lapses in implementing the excise policy. On August 1, Saxena had approved the Ahmadmi Party con government's move to extend excise licenses of private liquor, vans as well as hotels and bars by a month, holding out hope that alcohol supply would be resumed in a city that had to observe an unofficial dry day. Meanwhile, earlier today, Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia accused former Lieutenant Governor Anil Baijal of changing his stand over opening liquor vents in unauthorized areas and claimed that it led to a loss of thousands of crores of rupees to the city government. Five laborers were killed after a fire broke out in the boat at Rambur Diara Kat in Patna. It is being said that there was a cylinder explosion, but that's not the case, the Bihar police said. They were cooking near a few diesel canisters and a fire broke out, the police said, adding that they were yet to be identified. As per the information, the blast took place somewhere in the middle of the lake when illegal sand was transported via a boat from one end to another while the food was being cooked. More details are being awaited. At least 18 people fell ill after consuming prasad at a religious function in Assam's Majuli district. The incident took place in the Maharichug area near Garmur in the River Island district on Friday night. According to the reports, the villagers attended a religious program and soon after consuming the prasad, the people complained of stomach ache and vomiting. At least 18 people, including three children, were immediately admitted to the Sri Pitambar Dev Goswami District Hospital and the local administration suspected it to be food poisoning. That's all for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.